All right, so we are, this is the first episode of the new year. We are basically going to up north to Coach Rich's house, and we've got a lot of new goals this year. Um, we finished off the year strong, went to the Spartan Games, took second place, went to, which is basically like my first loss in like four years in that scene, which is fucking annoying, but what are you going to do? Um, since 2017. 2017. Um, but now we're going to go up north, we're going to go talk to Rich, and we're basically going to kind of change up our training plan completely from the CrossFit, heavy ass barbell, power cleans, barbell cycling, snatches, chest to bar pull-ups. Like that's still going to be in the, in the workout routine, but it's not going to be 50% of our training. It's going to drop way down to like 20, 30% of our training, and we're going to start revving up the endurance a lot. And our goal basically is we have the Invitational, we got the High Ross Invitational where the two world champions, myself and Lauren Weeks, are going to invite nine other athletes on each side to come compete against us for a big cash prize. We go 10,000, 3,000, 2,000 for the podium of that. Uh, that's going to be Dallas on February 20th. Obviously, everybody can sign up, but that's, that's just the Invitational for the 10. Um, our goal is to get 2,000 athletes there to support, crush it, have a blast. Then our next event is going to be the first race of the uh, National Series for Spartan Race. That's going to be on February 28th, and it is going to be in Jacksonville, Florida. Um, it's a sprint. It's flat. It's fast. It's really in my wheelhouse. Um, but, you know, we have basically just under eight weeks until then, and if we're smart, we go up, we go work with Rich, we just pound out the miles. Um, for me, it's just really going to be about practicing turnover and speed. Uh, I've got a lot of conditioning behind me. It's probably going to be losing a little bit of weight too, but I think the most important thing you can do is like, if you really care about something, you need to get outside of yourself and your comfort zone and go work with people that are going to push you. Uh, I'm still going to control my own training, uh, which I usually always do. But it's nice to have somebody like Rich who's a consultant who's like willing to have kind of that bird's eye view and be realistic with you of what's going on and what you got to change and tweak along the way to get there. So um, he's definitely been one of my secret weapons for a long time. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what he has to say because uh, 2021 is going to be a spicy one. Whee! This land's dope, but it's beefy. My shoulder is burning. Oh, that lens? Yeah. Yeah, I could tell. I could hear you breathing. What are you I'm pregnant? sweating a little bit. <laughs> sound like a pregnant chick. <laughs> <laughs> new year, new rich. Oh, fuck. I thought you were going to get rid of this thing. Dude, don't rush me, okay? I don't have 5,000 miles on it. What's up, man? Are you still hiding people in the house? Don't be a fucking dick, okay? <laughs> the other day, Rich calls me. He goes, I'm sorry. I can't can't have any friends over. <laughs> now we're back. New I couldn't have any enemies over either. <laughs> this is Malibu's most wanted attire. Like, if you're trying to be the king of cool, if you don't have the Malibu combat boots, then... Just old news. Um, yeah, so anyway, it was interesting. And so one of the things that uh, I even had a conversation with VJ about it this morning is that I was watching the MISO and you were running on average about 94% of max heart rate the entire time. Yeah. And there's no way in hell that that had anything to do with aerobic metabolism. Well, you were anaerobic from the gate. And you were the only time you went aerobic is when you went on the podium to hold your freaking thing up. Yeah, I don't think I don't think you can hold an aerobic at all during that. So the, my argument is is that why would you even try to supplement your training even 30 40 percent aerobically to enhance your capacity to support the anaerobic work? It just doesn't make any sense. You to can't me. hold you can't hold uh, that much anaerobic work. You can't stack on anaerobic work like that. No, look, dude, you did it. <laughs> did you not do it? I did it, but I was not in good shape for that thing. <laughs> so there's always an argument. Dude, I still wear this thing, and I, I, I think it's the, the biggest whoop. piece of shit in the world. I'm just going to tell you guys, I bought this whoop thing 
Not because I support Whoop. Not that I don't support Whoop. So don't <laughs> take that the wrong way. It's because I started working with Inside Tracker and I took all of my blood work and I was like, I'm going to actually study to see if I increase my sleep if some of these markers change because I've never been much of a sleep guy. The only way I could really do that accurately is this is probably one of the best sleep trackers. But that being said, it's also one of the worst trackers of everything else. And it's constantly dead. It's constantly taking like six hours to upload the information. This data piece right here, which is a Sunto, still tracks sleep. I don't think it's accurately. And it uploads everything else. Can I run, tell you something? It, but, it doesn't make any difference because this is operating on the same premise that this is. It's got an optical sensor. That's what I'm saying. I don't think this is any better. And I've told not. people that. I think it's inaccurate. I bought it because I'm a person who wants to know the science and the data rather than just assume and talk shit. I think if you really want to know how well recovered you are, buy a pulse, like a pulse uh, oximeter. Yeah, a pulse oximeter. Put that on your finger every single day. Measure it. If it's out of whack, up or down, much higher than like 10%, then you should probably rest and then or go easier. And I also think if you have a heart rate monitor, which I use all the time, and your runs are off, you should probably monitor that. What heart monitor did you use? I use Polar, dude. I mean, this is just, Polar's probably the best technology there is. I sync it up with my Sunto watch or my phone. Nice. Um, I'm really not, I don't get paid by any of these brands. I'll admit they sent me a free watch. They're kind, but I'm not talking highly of them because they sent it to me for free. <coughs> I just think it, it works well. It makes me happy. That's so, you know, what's true. interesting about what you just said is that Polar was the first human heart rate monitor. Yeah. So, they own the technology where heart rate is concerned. And then GPS being owned basically by Garmin and Sunto basically glammed on to both of their technologies. Yeah. And so they wrestle back and forth. GPS out of Garmin is going to be better than everybody else. Heart rate out of Polar is going to be better than everybody else. And you can't seem to get them all to do the right thing for you all the time. The Whoop is marketing. I have a, I have a Whoop, by the way, yeah. that was sent to me that's sitting on my desk in the container I pulled it out once, looked at it, realized it would not track my heart rate actively. Yeah. And I thought, well, this is dead to me. So well, I just the likely, it back. likelihood that you're going to be able to get a clean, accurate thing with as much hair as I have in my wrist. With well, much look, I have an optical sensor in here. Yeah. Same damn thing. And you know what? I don't trust this either. Because if daylight gets beneath there, it tosses off the data. Yeah. If you vasoconstrict, if you do like in your world, yeah. any kind of lifting, the vasoconstriction in the forearm going to throw off the, the blood flow, which is going to throw off the data. Yeah. And so there's so many mishaps that go on with, uh, I was sponsored by the first optical sensor heart rate monitor, which was Mio. You remember yeah, that? I remember that. And I gave you one and it was like shit, right? Like this is useless. Yeah. Every person I gave one to, I was embarrassed afterwards because it was so, what? This thing doesn't work when you do this or that or this, or, you know, like, fuck. Yeah. Well, so, listen, I, I'm trying. I, I'm willing. I'm trying. Right. I just want to see if just it works. throw that out there just in case they want to sponsor. No, 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 not at all, not at all. I wouldn't accept their money because I just yes, don't you think would. it's. No, I wouldn't, dude. I, they, I bet they, you would. I'm telling you, like something like a company like Theragun, which is like an eight hundred dollars. If they want to give you five hundred thousand dollars a year to wear it, and you're going to talk all kinds of wonderful shit about no it. No one's paying me five hundred thousand dollars, and I'm, I, just, I'm saying, just telling you, I wouldn't accept it because I don't. I don't believe you it. would. This polar thing and this thing, yes. So maybe two fifty each. Yeah. <laughs> These, these things are sounding true. If Ugg wanted to sponsor me, Ugg did? I'll do it for free. Our Uggs, regardless. Battle boots. Well, it sounds to me like you got the shit wired. You don't need me. What was the Working one out? thing if you watched that thing soup to nuts in, uh, in, the, in the event? What was, I, what was I worse at than anything else? Um, I think that your, your basic strategy was sound. Okay. You screwed up on that one, did I do enough of these, and you lost some time there. Yeah. Um, so you want to know what you did worse? What was the thing that I was the worst at out of all the stations in running included? You know, what the good news is, right. I don't think I could find a hole in it. I was, it was running. The only thing no, I could No, 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 I, I know what you're saying. But, but so look, first of all, I can't grade you on that thing because that thing takes over. Even even on the um, even on every on the regular ones, I'm I'm still the slowest runner amongst the top three. I just don't get tired. Let me, let me can I grade the commentary? Okay. These guys that were doing the commentary, some of the things that we're saying is they're trying to explain what was going on. 
was so ridiculously off point. I just didn't know what to do with myself. So. Uh, but so you, it looked to me like your your strategy was hold a pretty decent pace, yeah. uh, but not go crazy. And you were right. This guy was not going to sustain what he was doing first down. That that first move coming off uh, the skier to the to the to the treadmill. Yeah. When you sprinting, sprinted over there and just was going hog on that on that treadmill. I'm going. This is going to last about five minutes before it starts. Did you see him pulling on the thing. So I watched him. I watched him going into this, and I was watching him warm up. And he would pull on the thing like he was trying to break it. And I was yeah. like, This dude's trying to show off and show everybody how tough he is. It's like I'm gonna freaking chill out and I'm gonna watch this thing unravel right in front of me. And he did. I mean, he's an incredibly talented athlete. Well, and then the, just, the burpees. You know, I think he's got some issue with range of motion. He couldn't even pull off a burpee without going to his knees. I think everyone was just tired, man. Well, everybody was tired, but nobody was going to their knees but him. Now, that was a strategy. If you watch Atkins, dude, Atkins does similar kind of burpees when he tries to go for, like, really high high rep stuff. It takes longer. Yeah, but when you're tired, it's conserving energy. Well, you, you could have that energy. He was going down to do a burpee, and then he'd go like this. It was I don't know. He would, like, crawl up on his knees. It, it, I think it took twice as long to get up like that than it did for you just to hop along, even your short little bunny hops. It was a lot from those treadmills, dude. We were burning out our hamstrings and our butt cheeks. Uh, I, I can't. I can't. I was, re I was ready to pop. Uh, like honestly, I was. You're supposed to be ready to pop. You're trying to win. No, no, I was ready. To, like I, I was about to cramp up. Also, the, the what the did to my Tibial muscles and my it, this whole band of muscles. You see, like that whole like mountain of muscles right there yeah. this was blown up this is blown up and that was blown up so bad like i literally haven't been able to walk straight since the event um, but fuck it we got a good treadmill now well let's get you up here see One now more. we're just talking trash if you don't have a coach you can just fucking wrap back and forth with then you don't have a good coach you gotta have conversation man you know and if there's no other argument for having a coach is having somebody to bounce your ridiculousness off of. That's what I literally just said on the car right up here. I know, but no, you know, I'll touch just now. So, no, no, let's no, get the car right up here. All right. Out or in? Uh, let's just go in first. We're just going to see what we can do. Okay. Probably hold like a five minute pace for that. Five fifteen. I don't know. You're talking about for, for the three, Jacksonville? The three minute. No, I'm talking about the three minutes on, 30 seconds on. Oh, yeah. Well, we could set, let, let's just set it up at 11.5 uh, okay. and see what that does. Before I start going, I gotta pee again. I know you like to make fun of me, but every time I come up here, I drink about 32 ounces beforehand, so I'm hydrated for the party. Oh, yeah. Hydrated for the party! I almost killed myself. Am I allowed to go to the house or am I allowed to be outside? Alright, cool, because I kind of got to pee too. I was going to hold it. Yeah. <laughs> See? Woo! Can you come in and watch me pee? Morning. Got to make sure the flow's on. Flow's, flow's on point. Come here, man. Okay. So. Get, you get, start getting this and getting this. 
and then you're just screwing your foot into the ground. You're breaking at the same time. I need you to lead with your knees. I want your foot to be close. I want your foot to be dangling beneath your knee when you hit. Okay? Uh, we're going to go, uh, like I said, 11 5. I'm going to start the timer. And set the timer up to three minutes. Ready? Yeah, I just can't keep that. I'm more concerned that you don't get sloppy trying to keep up. Yeah. I want you to earn the form. Earn the yeah. form. And then you can start going faster. Whew. That's hard. Yeah. My legs. It's just not sustainable at that pace right now. And you're so like, I hear it. It's a boom, boom. You're just, I want to hear this nice little tap. And this, this, I want to feel this flowed action before your foot comes back to the ground. Because you're working too hard. Yeah. We've got to reduce the cost of work. You ready? Yeah. Go. That's better. That's better. That's much better. Just got to get into a mind grip and just hang on to what you're doing right now. Just flows. Don't get ahead of that metronome. About a 545, I think. Yeah. So I think I can continue to gain and pick up on it. That one was too fast for me to keep gains. No, I know, but my my suggestion is this: you need to own this. You start to feel the connection you're making. I can only do it at this speed. That's my point. I get it, but you're going to start noticing that the more you own it, you'll know what you're feeling, you know what you're looking for. You can tolerate a little bit more pace. But I'm not, I'm not interested in seeing if you can go faster right now. I just want you to own it at a sub-6 pace. Okay. What's your heart rate now? 118. Yeah, so you're ready to go. Okay. And hit it. I 
see it right now, it's even better. It feels good, right? Yeah. You can, you can identify just by the sound of his feet that he's hitting cleaner. He's not, he's not a, uh, aggravated by the pace. It's kind of smooth. That's exactly what we're looking for. Just don't get ahead of the cadence. You gotta feel the flow. You gotta feel like you're floating. Very good. Hey, that feels way better. Yeah, keep that up. Just keep that up. See, like if this was you running on that track, not that treadmill, yeah. doing this after every exercise, you would crush these guys because they're going to go off, the mechanics are going to be shot, their heart rate's going to go through the roof, and it'll just eventually it'll start to take them out. This pace all by itself through your own admission is well fast enough to, to keep the world record. I think it's a 56 minute finish time, if you can do this. Cool, get out. What's it say now? 165. I'll take it. I'm going to try to take it up to 11. He's going to struggle with it a little bit, but I think now that you know what you're feeling, you might be able to correct it, you might be able to make it work. Okay. It's going to make your heart rate go up a little bit more, but I think it's, I think it's something we need to do. Pick him up, pick him up. So the hypothesis I've been spouting off about is the importance of de developing the anaerobic system. Teach your body to get rid of that lactate more efficiently and or use it. And uh, most people, it's like vampires in the sun. As soon as they start going anaerobic, they, they, they fizzle, they burn out. You've got to develop the capacity to move that lactate. I just don't see where throwing a lot of aerobic conditioning into this is going to be beneficial. Right up. Yep. What are we at? We've got 45 seconds left. So I want you to take a little bit more recovery this time. I want to shorten the duration. I want to increase the speed. I want to challenge your ability to stay on point with the way you're moving. All right. Probably only got about two more intervals until this cap goes. Here. Use that. Use that foam roller with the vibrator. Trust me, Evan. Just do it. Beating the shit out of these things. Okay. 
big ass legs. You gotta work hard. You have towels here. They do. Wow. Game changer. Better? Way better. Alright. What are you doing now? We're gonna go one minute at 12.5. You're gonna really have to open your stride up. This is a mechanical challenge. That's why I shortened the duration. If you're successful doing one, we might do it one more time. Drop it down to something that would have been way unsustainable and make it's duck suit. It's easy. Go from 22 to 18. 18 turns into 10 second intervals. Yeah. Which is a lot for that speed. Can we go in at 120 again? Yep. We'll do one more like this and then we're going to bring it back down. Cap feel better? Yeah. I just, it's just, it's still from that treadmill, dude. It's like deep down in the soleus, down to the Achilles. And I can feel it down right underneath my ankle bone. It's just like so tight there because you're putting so much extra angle on your foot. You know? you're, you're pulling on that heel cord. Yeah. So I'm trying to get shit off your shoe. Ready? Yeah. Go. One sixty-seven again. Good. Now we'll bring it back down. I'm gonna bring it back down to eleven five. This is what you struggled with when you first rolled in here. It's a lot. Okay, so we're going back to three minutes. Three minutes. Yeah, we're slow. Show up for that shit. No, I'm on a train plane now. 
Yeah, you are. I want to go to fitness retreats. You're such a little bitch. No. Nope. You and I train. Nobody else. That one got me up. That was seven beats higher than any other interval. Oh. Fuck. Hard. Yeah, well, it was the last one. Oh. How are you feeling? Is that hard for you too? Yeah, it was. Yeah. So, give you a recap of what we did. I think we did five, six intervals at three minutes increasing intensity then we did two one minute intervals the way i would probably program it for somebody just to keep it clean is probably like four times three minutes three to four times one minute at the end if you were trying to make it a good workout but since rich and i are just testing out the wheels for the beginning of the year we are kind of moving all over the place trying to figure out where we're at and obviously you can't have Rich's skills exactly unless you work with Rich. If you're in the area or even anywhere in the world, I'd suggest you try to reach out to him and come visit. Otherwise, I try to take all the skills. The metronome is probably the best thing I could mention to someone at home trying to learn from this stuff. And then probably filming yourself independently is another skill you could do to kind of try to critique. But other than that, um, it's best to be with a the nutty professor, if you know what I mean. Yeah, well, you know, the, the thing about it is, is it, it's not one size fits all. I, I have a lot of times people reach out to me and they're trying to replicate things they saw us do. Yeah. And uh, a lot of the things that we do is because of the knowledge I've developed about you, where your weaknesses are, where your strengths are. Yeah. And I try to address the weaknesses and exemplify the strength. So I know that. When your mechanics are clean, your sustainability goes through the roof. Yep. So just you know, go hog on the treadmill at high, high rates of speed and just let the mechanics go to shit, that's not gonna benefit you. Yep. And then a lot of people will try to, they think in the timelines, you, you just represented three minutes doing this, two minutes doing this, whatever, and then they're gonna try to create those speeds behind it, and then the mechanics can go out the window. So. For a lot of people, what they need to do is slow all the way down until they own it. Yeah. And I'm telling you, if it comes down to like a 11-minute um, a, uh, mile pace in order to own proper mechanics and progressively build themselves up from there, that's really important. And so, um, you know, not to bring another player into the field here, but because VJ had been so close with me for so long, we would come in here and it was like a, d a dancing routine. I'd get him on the treadmill, set him up at 12 and a half miles per hour. His mechanics were on point and his cadence is on point and it's conversational pace. Yeah. We could sit there and talk while he's doing that. Yeah. And um, when his mechanics are off, he can't do it. He starts to struggle. Uh, he starts to get sloppier because he identifies he's struggling. And then, and then it all goes to worms. So. Again, it's like it's kung fu moves, you know. When you when you have somebody that understands it and sees it, I can almost feel what's happening to you while you're doing what you're doing. So when I'm kind of talking you through, okay, there you go, you're there, you're not, you're there. I can almost feel the resistance come down when you're landing properly. Yeah. It's just being, you know, tenure, standing there next to that treadmill, year after year after year, and, and watching people move, you start to identify with their their costs. Yeah.
Let's do this. All right. You cracked your windshield already, dude? Dude, if you take any of these Touch cars the on car rides, <laughs> and I'm gonna go get this thing detailed and nothing else I'm gonna do. If you do any kind of adventures or have fun with your cars, just you fuck shit up. <laughs> One thing I can do. I don't know, man. I kind of look at these and say, yeah, that'd be kind of fun to play with. I don't drive very much. I'm telling you, this is the best car I've bought. I, like, I love fast, I love, I love fancy, but I, I really, it's so easy to drive around. It's got a 2.0 turbo, so it, it hauls. You can do whatever the heck you want, throw everything you want in the back of it. If something's screwed up, you can just take a hose and wash the inside of it out. So you go, look, it's probably like $40,000 cheaper than that thing. 4,800 miles. April will be two years. Yeah, you need to get one of these things. Take all the doors off. Have some fun. I'm out. Right, peace out. You guys be safe, all right? Sounds good. Oh. Good to see you. Right. Happy New Year, my friend. You too. Monday, right? Yeah, I'll be here.